Good morning. This is Jerry3904 on the MX Linux forum and I'm here today to do a very quick video about the MX23 Fluxbox for, because the release candidate is being built today as I speak. I'm using a, uh, a Acer Aspire 1 722 laptop which I've had for well over a decade and MX Fluxbox runs very well on it. Okay, in this first section, we're going to look at five quick things. I'll, I'll do a longer video later, but these are really quick things that you will want to check at the very beginning. The first one is, go down here and right-click the notifier and check for updates. I'm not going to do it here, but I, that would be the very first thing that I would do. The second thing is you would want to check the uh, time, uh, the time, the way 12 or 18 hours, uh, 12 or 24 hours is set. Uh, the panel will do a quick way of looking at that. The panel, uh, you can't right click that clock and get very far but uh, to do that. But I'm going to open up the settings manager here from the dock. I'm going to scroll down and that panel is called Tint 2, so I'm going to click on that manager. And there's the Tint 2 that we're using. And here's a button called 12H slash 24H. And if you need to, you would just click on that button and it would change uh, the uh, time format. As far as the Conky is concerned, uh, it, this one is automatic. It should automatically pick up according to your time zone. If not, you can use Conky Manager, uh, which is Fluxbox Appearance Conky. Conky Manager, I already opened it here. And here's this, if this, this was our, this is the uh, checked one is the, is the uh, Conky we're using. And go up to these little gears up here and then click on time. This one is, you can't change because it's automatic, but if, you, if one was manual, you could change it there. While we're here, uh, I want to check another thing that's really important. Fluxbox has a whole set of sometimes called key bindings or shortcuts that we use all the time. So I'm going to turn this off. A user of ours put together a nice, uh, a nice uh, conky on that. Uh, and it's called Flux Keys down here, MX Flux Keys. Well, there it is, and uh, there's the most common Flux Keys that we uh, use. This is a little bit hard to read because of the background, but we also have a magnifier, screen magnifier, so I'm going to turn that on. And now when it comes up, here it is. When it comes up, now I can go over these with my cursor and read them very carefully. Very handy. This is new. Uh, we've been pushed to try to add some uh, uh, accommodations for people who have maybe sight problems. So this makes it very handy and it's a good way to learn those keystrokes that are so common. All right, I'm going to turn that off because I don't want a conky on this desk top. It's, this, is a, this is a small format laptop so that it really uh, kind of dominates things. And I'm also going to get rid of the other things on here to make things a little clearer. So I'll right click the desktop again and go to out of sight. I'm going to kill the dock. Out of sight. I'm going to toggle the icons. Get those out of sight. Good. That's, get, that's looking better. This is the default wallpaper. Um, but I'll leave it for now. I can change it later. Finally, uh, this laptop is very good with the touchpad, but on many, uh, it's, it's actually a problem. Uh, it's very, very sensitive, but you can do that by going, I'll go Settings Manager again. Here we go, and uh, here's this touchpad indicator. I won't do it because this one is good. There's a whole video on that, but that's where you would control the sensitivity or turn it off and that kind of thing. It's a very handy, uh, a very handy item. Okay, that's it for quickies. Okay, let's take a quick look at, I called it tour, but the two fastest ways to get an overview 
of, uh, of MX Fluxbox in general, MX23 Fluxbox. The first is called MX Tour. You can, get, you can get to it a lot of ways. We'll look at that when we look at menus, but I already have it open. And MX Tour is a very handy, very handsome screen uh, with a left column of topics and a right column with images and explanations. And you can see that if I just quickly go through, this is about that panel, that tin 2 that we talked about, and how to read the basic one that, that is at the bottom of my screen. Um, this is about App Finder. It's the, uh, it's the new, brand new menu. I'll talk and look at that in a second. The App Finder menu uh, that's brand new for MX23. Uh, this is about the dock. Uh, quickly here on the on the dock, now that's best followed by um, then taking a look at the short MX Fluxbox user's manual. It's set for con Control F1, and it's asleep. Oh, here we go. Thank you. It's Fluxbox manual. <coughs> excuse me. That lays out a detailed. Uh, uh, it starts with the de default setup and details, and then there also is a traditional Fluxbox part. And uh, it's highly worth, I have people say, I hear people say, oh my God, I didn't know this, I didn't know about that. Well, don't be lazy, take a look. Uh, here is the, uh, the Fluxbox setup, walks you around. Um, there are some video links for some of the parts. So highly worth it, it's a quick, tour, a, follow, a quick follow-up to the MX tour, and those two together will put you in pretty good shape to, uh, to dive into MX Fluxbox. Okay, the next topic has to do with menus. MX Fluxbox uh, comes with three full menus. Uh, some people are a little confused by that, but the point is you take a look at them, you decide which kind of menu you like, and you either disable or get rid of the ones you don't like. Uh, let's take a look at what options we have. The first, since I already mentioned it, over here at the left end of the, of the panel is App Finder. This is a brand new, uh, brand new system. Uh, we replaced the, what we were using, and it's built upon Rofi that I'll talk about in a minute. This is a non-categorical uh, it's just a, it's a listing of applications. It's more or less alphabetical, but as you could tell by looking at, my, at this, what you see on this, it also records at the very top the ones that you have used or frequently used, which is very nice. Uh, you can, this, this gives you the, the second icon gives you the categories. You can click on that and come up and have an entire category. And then there's a settings, a very nice settings. <clears throat> uh, the settings possibility, the help document, and a whole settings way to uh, uh, set up how this menu looks to you, uh, which is very nice. So you're not, it's nothing is imposed on you. That's the first one. That's a dynamic menu because if you install something, it shows up, uh, it shows up on the, on the menu. I'm going to right click into the right click the desktop into the root menu. This is a traditional original Fluxbox menu. It's static. That is, say if I in, uh, if I install uh, something, it won't show up on here unless I actually add it, which is easy to do. Um, it's set up to be the most common uh, the most common uh, applications that we do or functions that we do. Uh, the top is, a couple, is all apps, which is the third menu we'll look at in a second. There's this nice recent files. I didn't update it, but let's update it and then go back and see what it looks like. Oh, I know. I have to, it, in order for it to start, you have to once log out and back in. But I, I, and then so, some, some things that are good here, uh, commonly inside these two separators. And then the functional appearance settings out of sight and leave. <coughs> I'm not going to go into those detail. I've done it before and I'll do it again uh, in a longer longer way. Now let's go to all apps. Uh, this is a, a kind of a, a sort of a traditional Debian menu format with the categories here and the categories are, uh, are, are uh, 
f filled out. This is another dynamic menu, so if I install an application, it'll show up on this. Uh, if it doesn't and you've dynamed it, you can click the manual update uh, and update it to look. The, the menu is set to automatically update after uh, installation, but if you want to disable that, you can click on this and then it won't change until you actually click. Uh, in addition to those three menus, which are really quite different, there's some very common things that we use. One is, the is I mentioned Rofi, which is a, a, a really nifty item. We really like a great deal. It's mapped to, uh, you can get to it a lot of places, but it's mapped to the, the logo key or the Windows key, or it's got lots of... Um, lots of names, but the one that has an icon on your desktop. So if I click this, up comes Rofi, and you could begin to type, and it will, uh, it will go, uh, so what, what would I like? What if I had uh, LibreOffice, L-I-B, and it, you have it there. If I wanted to get, anyway, that's how it works. It's very nice. There is a Help tab. Um, which gives you on Rofi explains a lot about Rofi. You can use it as a calculator. Uh, a lot of details are available here. Uh, we have, uh, we'll see in a minute, we have a lot of themes that you can choose as well. So that Rofi is really handy. If you don't know the name, if you don't know where something is, I, I usually use that all the time. I just whack on that, uh, on that logo key. And secondly, Control F2 brings up a run box. And this is very nice. It, it's built, it's based on Rofi, but it's very fast. Uh, it you can you can not only bring up applications. Uh, the the uh, the menus are looking at the applications folder, but this one looks both at applications and at um, any executable, any 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 uh, program that can be run. And unlike the traditional uh, Fluxbox. Run, run box. This one can uh, show, used, you can enter a command that goes in the terminal. If you wanted to check, for instance, the uh, HTOP, which is the processes, if I go control, I'm sorry, shift enter, it'll open up a, a, a terminal. And there is this program. It's, it's not an application, but there is this whole program. It lets you see what your memory situation is. It lets you see oh, um, the, the oper what's taking up your resources, etc. So there we go. Those are the three menus and two other really simple ways of opening things that you, you can figure out which ones you like and which ones work the best for you. Okay, the fourth topic is customization. Here at MX Fluxbox, we like to make as much as possible how we want it to be in layout and colors, uh, all sorts of things. And so we continue to develop applications to help us do that. I'm going to show you a few um, that we will uh, just so you, you can get details later. So the key is going to be the settings manager. Uh, we've all we've already seen this once. Uh, and you'll see that this has, under the user category, there's three or four of them here that are interesting. Um, for instance, Tin2 Manager, I showed you that's the place, there's a whole separate video on that. That's the place where you do everything about choosing which panel, choosing the layout of the panel, etc. Rofi Manager, which, uh, which um, we already... Uh, no, I didn't do that. Rofi Manager, which is... Rofi, we should, we looked at those Rofis, and there's a whole video on this one too. So you can you can set up the color, you can set up location, you can do all of that out of this very handy, uh, very handy Rofi manager. It, it greatly magnifies how much freedom you have. Uh, <coughs> here's a kind of a neat one. The uh, when you click the exit there, you get a set of exit options. It's a bunch of icons, uh, but if you want to change that, you can right-click that now, or you can just open up those exit options. 
And here's a good example of what we like when we were developing this. We kept, we had lots of ideas, so we put them all together. So, so the icon set, the top one is the default. The icon set that you get, there's four or five there that you can choose from. And then you can change the settings. Is it horizontal? Is it vertical? Da, da, da. That's all very clear. So I, mean, I won't. Um, there is a brand new font uh, choice for, for as far as optimization. Uh, it's very clear. It's pretty straightforward. There is um, MX Tweak has <coughs> has uh, adapted now to help us pull together themes. And these are the four elements of a theme. You can choose them and figure out what you want, and then you can save it as a theme set, which is pretty nice. Okay, so there you have it. A bit longer than five minutes, but I hope this short, quick start will let you feel comfortable to start and to go ahead and look at it. Uh, keep your eyes open for the blog announcement of the release candidate, which should be up in a couple of days. Uh, I'm going to switch and show you finally uh, another of the wallpapers and conkeys available. This one, since the theme is libretto, these are libretti on the right hand side and a really new, a nice new conkey that I've put there. Take care and we'll see you later.